First of all, I'd like to apologize that my recent video on the cubic formula was a bit on the long side. So today I'm going to teach you how you can save time. But first, let's look at this complicated proof of E equals MC squared. There's the E. Here are three rows of calculations. And there's the conclusion, E equals MC squared by Albert Einstein. I'm really proud to say that he wrote QED at the end, although I'm a little disappointed he forgot the big fat check mark, or better yet, the smiley face. Now, Einstein was famous for saying, everything should be made as simple as possible, but no simpler. Always look for the easy solution, but make sure it's a correct solution. Another reason I'm wearing this t-shirt is because it has the relativistic factor 1 minus v over c squared in it. And that's what I want to do today is save you some time. If you travel close to the speed of light, time slows down and masses increase. Very interesting phenomenon. Okay, let's talk about, first of all, average speed or could just be constant speed. We don't have to have the word average in there. Or using symbol, V equals D over T. Now, let's say I wanted to solve for D. If I rearrange this formula, what's D equal to? That's right, VT, V times T. And what's time equal to? A little bit harder, but hopefully you realize it's D over V. If ever you have trouble remembering any one of these formulas, or the definition even, just think of a concrete example, like traveling down the highway at 100 kilometers per hour for, let's say, three hours. How far would you go? Common sense. 300 kilometers, right? How'd you get it? You multiplied those two numbers. So distance is speed, this one, times time, this one. And then you can rearrange, rearrange the formulas as needed. Okay. Let's say you're going for a walk or you're listening to a podcast or watching a video and you want to save a bit of time, what can you do? Go faster. So let's say that you increase your speed to, let's call it V2 from V1 by let's say a factor of 25%. You go 25% faster. What percentage of time are you going to save? What's your gut feeling? 25%? Let's find out. Well, the time to listen at the original speed is d over v1 from here. And the time at the new speed would be d over v2, where d, again, just the, the distance you walk or the length of the book you're reading or podcast, etc. We want to calculate the second time using these formulas and find out how it compares to the first time. Well, T2 is D over V2, which equals, using this formula, V1 T1 over V2. Basically, I'm just using this for D. And if I said V2 is that, I get V1 T1 over 1.25 V1. What happens to the V1s? They cancel, so it doesn't matter how fast your original speed was. Now if I rewrite this as some number times T1, what's 1 divided by 1.25? You did in your head? can, otherwise I guess you can use a calculator. This is 5 quarters, by the way, so if you take the reciprocal, that's what we're doing when it's on the bottom, that becomes 4 fifths, or 0 0.8. So it only takes you 80% of the time, not 75%, 80% of the time, if you go 25% faster. Pretty good deal, eh? So you can save time listening to those podcasts. Now, what if it's 50% faster. I tried this with the podcast. I thought it was 
too, too fast to listen to, but for the sake of argument, then what happens? Well, we just change this one number. One point five is three halves, so the reciprocal of that is two thirds. So, so this is point six repeated, and three point seven. So you save a third of the time. So give it a shot. You'll make up for having to had to listen to that long video I made on the cubic formula. See you next time.